live. I live all the way down there. I ran here. I run into David in the black, who talks me into coming to play basketball with him instead of finishing my run. Oh, I'm in, right? Scored two in a row, but David still got the lead over there. Right. That's game! I am a terrible basketball player. <laughs> now we got two boxes. I showed this juice machine last week and people didn't understand how it worked. You just squeeze it and it tis out the juice. really good. Uh, maybe you noticed, maybe you haven't. I've been shooting the vlogs on an entirely new camera setup for the last like four or five episodes. I'm getting a lot of questions about them. I want to do a little tech segment. I know a lot of people give me a hard time about tech segments and I'm super insecure about it. So if you're not interested in camera tech talk, go ahead and skip to this exact time right here. And that's when this segment will have concluded. Okay, 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 okay. So, I've been shooting the vlog for the most part on this bad boy right here. This is the latest and greatest from Panasonic or Lumix. It's called the Lumix GH5. I like it. I like it a lot. It's almost right. Prior to that, I was shooting on this thing, the A6500 by Sony. This one's 2000. This one is like 1300. This one's nice and small and sleek. This thing's pretty large and bulky. Which one takes a better image? The Sony. Which one has better focus? The Sony. Which one has better low light performance? The Sony. Which one do I like better? The Lumix. Let me tell you why. It's simple. I can't vlog without a front facing screen. I, I can't do it. This thing does not have a front facing screen. So I love this camera, but it's got to sit on the shelf. I need to be able to see my face when I vlog. I really genuinely feel like that they designed and made this thing with YouTubers in mind. It's got great 4K. It also has a super powerful uh, front facing screen. It's like the same kind of screen that's on my cell phone, super good blacks, gives you a really good image. It's got a slot there that holds two SD cards so it can shoot to both. Battery on this thing is good. It's like as good as the Canons were. It does have full autofocus while you're recording. It's not Sony A6500 or Canon 80D good, but it's definitely good enough. My favorite thing, all time favorite thing, is the fact that the, the chip itself is stabilized. So the recording mechanism inside of this camera is on a five axis gimbal or three axis gimbal or something, and it keeps it really smooth. Also, this is kind of stupid, but I love that the microphone input is right here, like in its own special spot, instead of being down here where all these other ports are like it is on every other camera. I feel like instead of having engineers in some room design this, they actually had people who use these devices sit down and design it. The front facing screen, I cannot say enough about. Okay, now what sucks about it? This has a tiny chip in it. See that little, 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 little fella in there? See that chip size? That's called a micro four thirds chip. One inch, APS-C, micro four thirds. Now, chip size does mean a lot, but like I've been reminded for much of my life, size isn't everything. This thing does incredible things with that small chip. The color reproduction, the image itself, I really like in bright sunlight, it's unbelievable. But it falls apart when it gets dark outside. Low light on this thing is, is pretty weak, especially compared to the A6500. Focus, when there's not a lot of light, it just, this thing is just worthless. It has no idea what to grab focus on. But that's okay, because I do understand and I can empathize with hardware limitations. Hardware limitations are just the limitations of the actual hardware. What I have no appreciation for are software limitations because what you can do with software is limitless and it should be perfect. So this is probably my single biggest beef with this camera. I never know when it's recording. Look, let me show you. I'm exaggerating, but let me show you. It's recording right now. 
See how you have this little blinky light right here that's recording? Give me something more than a tiny blinking light. When I glance down, I wanna know with confidence that it's recording, this light doesn't do it for me. But then, I accidentally touch this really unnecessary menu over here. Now I look down, is it recording or is it not recording? Why is that red record light covered by this menu? Who designed this interface? It's terrible. Even if I stop recording, this stupid menu stays up. So if I start recording it, I, it's... Okay, that's one beef. Number two, this one's even more egregious. Say I'm recording like I am right now. See the blinky blink? And then I want to use the tap to focus, which is great. Tap right here. Cool, now it's focused on the nearest object. Wait, did it stop recording? Is it still recording? Is it recording right now? I don't know, let me just check on the screen. There's no notification. How about on the blinking light? There is none. I have no idea if it's recording right now. Lumix, what were you thinking? So in their defense, that is just a software issue, just. That is a software issue that could be fixed with a firmware update. Lumix, get on it, that is unacceptable. Next thing is about button layout. When in movie mode, which is the only mode I'll ever use it in, when I press the shutter, not the dedicated record button, the shutter, it starts recording. That sounds insignificant, it's a big deal. Lumix, thank you, it's great. See this little button right here that says D-I-S-P as in display? This little bastard right here? All right, that is what cycles through the information that's on the screen. See, display, 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 display. This makes no sense. The location is right there, as in exactly where this thumb organically rests. So while I'm shooting on the fly, I'm constantly accidentally pressing this button and the screen turns off. And sometimes I'll be recording, and I'm struggling enough to look for your tiny, tiny, invisible blinking red light, and now is it recording? I have no idea, the blinking light's gone. And then I press it again, the whole thing's off. So those are my initial thoughts. Overall, I really like it. That will indeed be my new vlogging camera until something better comes along. I think it's expensive, but I think if, if, if you're looking for a very serious vlogging camera that I would say the Lumix is currently the best on the market despite the shortcomings I just outlined. Now hopefully I won't hit that stupid button so often. Okay, earlier today I filmed a thing where I used this juice machine Full disclosure, this is my friend's startup, and it's my favorite thing ever. It's like a juice press. You put the packets of juice in there, it squeezes them, delicious juice comes out. Then I saw that Juicero, the name of this, was trending on Twitter, because apparently you don't need this whole device. You just, you can just squeeze this packet of chopped vegetables and out comes the juice. So I thought I would test it. All right, so this is the packet of chopped vegetables. This is the extremely technologically advanced press that is required to squeeze the juice out. We're gonna now, did you see this? It's yeah. trending on Twitter right now. We're gonna see if you can actually extract the juice without this extremely advanced Tesla iMac-like machine. Ready? Squeeze that juice, that's Casey. Even faster. You're so strong. I'm giving everything I got. I'm so thirsty. <laughs> it's taking so long. <laughs> All right, but that's not the as much as comes out of no, the machine. Well, you're not done yet. Well, keep, going. keep going. Keep going. I had to squeeze for a while. How long did it take you? Should roll it up like. Whoa! Wow. Whoa! Jay. He has his down to science. <laughs> to a science. <laughs> You know? Don't take Jake's hand. <laughs> oh my god. God, how many times have you seen over the top? <laughs> Let's cut open the packet now. Hold on, I'm not done juicing. Okay, quit. I'm legitimately getting tired. Maybe squeeze it. Does that give you delicious fresh juice? Yeah, look, inside oh, yeah. are... Oh, it's frozen broccoli. It's not. All inside are delicious. Oh my god. That is fiber. Mm, fresh vegetables. That will run right through you. <laughs> hey, we'll give it a taste. How's it taste? <laughs> it's delicious. <laughs> That's great. It's great. It's really good. Chris it's Chris great. Chris, uh... And if you don't have a Jake at home to squeeze your juice for, <laughs> you still need the machine. How's the juice? I love it. And I don't even like this stuff. Oh my god, 
It's like we had a toaster oven. <laughs> okay. All that time she was waiting for the heater. There's a woman squatting out of the taxi cab. Get in the car! That woman, that woman hey. down there, that woman down there was just squatting out of a taxi cab, peeing on the side of the road, and Candace said that's disgusting. And then, and then wanted she wanted to, to fight me. I love New York Whatever. City. Whatever.